Builders Workshop. It's a pretty warm day here in the shop. I'm gonna be taking the coat off here in a minute. Actually might hit 70 degrees today, so uh, good day to do a little bit of re rearranging and uh, getting things moved around. But first, I need to do something with a chuck. I bought a Jacobs 20N, it's a one inch chuck, and it has a rather beat up number three Morse taper arbor, which is a little small. Number three Morse taper is what the uh, Acroturn lathe is, but uh, I think if I put that chuck in the tailstock of the Acroturn lathe, it'll tip over. So it's, I bought it really for the Monarch lathe, and most of you who are newer to the channel don't even know I have a Monarch lathe, but it's actually the first piece of equipment that I bought. It's a CW 16 by 54 engine lathe. It was outdoors, it was 150 bucks, but it was basically in pretty good shape. So I, I am gonna restore it and uh, get it up and running. And the one inch chuck will be for that. So let me show you the chuck, the problem with it, and the innovative uh, engineering trick I'm gonna use to get that arbor out of it. And I actually have three ball bearing super chucks. Uh, the first one, I think this came on the drill press, the 1890s drill press from Doozer. If not, I, I don't know where I got this one, which is a number 14, and that's a zero to half inch. That has a, I think it's a number two Morse with a two to three adapter on it. And so just to give you some size comparisons, I bought a three quarter inch chuck. And uh, this one had a, also had a stuck arbor in it, but I put a new, uh, number three Morse taper arbor in that chuck. So that's my three quarter. And then, and that's a, uh, is this a 14? 18, that's a number 18. So we got a 14 and 18. And this is the Jacobs 20N, three eighths to one inch super chuck. And that is one massive chuck. Now you can see that this is really beat. And this, in my opinion, is too small of an arbor to uh, run this chuck, you know, the way it should be run. So this will be used in the Acroturn lathe. This is gonna be used in the Monarch lathe, but I have to get this uh, Morse taper arbor out of it. And I bought a brand new number four Morse taper arbor. Let me show you that. So that's a number four matching, I think it's a five Jacobs Tabor. Jacobs Taper goes up inside this chuck. Now, the issue is getting this out. In the three quarter inch chuck, if you look at the inside, basically it's, it's kind of bored straight through and you can see the entire end of the uh, uh, adapter arbor itself, but in the, the one inch chuck, looking inside, it is only drilled, and I mean, it's a very small through hole that goes through where you can see the end of the uh, Jacobs Tabor arbor, and I don't feel comfortable, you know, trying to push that out with a push rod. Um, it is awfully small, this one I was able to use a pretty large diameter round bar and it, it was really stuck. I mean, it was all my little uh, uh, Dake Arbor Press could do to press this out. But I'm gonna employ a trick with this one and it's gonna use a hydraulic principle. So let me take you over the board and show you what I'm gonna do. Let's see how fast I can sketch this so you can see what's going on. The diameter at the top of the arbor is one inch 320. That gives about 1.3 ish uh, square inches of surface area inside that cavity. Basically what I want to do is create hydraulic pressure that can push this arbor out by applying a small force and multiplying it. So I'm going to use this steel sleeve, which has a 3 8 bore. 
and I put an o-ring groove in it. So we're going to have an o-ring seal here and that piece will come up. It'll be clamped in the jaws and I'm going to have a mandrel that is going to fit in here. And we're going to strike the mandrel with a hammer. Now this is 3 8 diameter. The difference in diameter from, or rather the difference in area from this to this is about 12 to 1. So the pressure on the insides of this cavity, everything acting on these faces in a hydraulic system, all those surfaces are going to be at the same pressure. So if I put a thousand pounds of force on here, it's going to get multiplied by the difference in area from that piston to this piston by a factor of 12. And that's how I hope to generate enough force with a relatively small application of force here to pop this guy free. I used this trick on the quill stop on my Monarch lathe. Now that was a blind cavity, but it had a stud coming up through the center. Luckily, I was able to get the stud out. And I packed that inside cavity full of grease, found a mandrel that just fit inside that quill stop, drove it down with a hammer, and that pushed the um, quill stop up out of the bore. And I'll tell you, when you know, if you got to make sure you, all the air bubbles are out of here. But when you're hitting an incompressible fluid, you know, against that's retained by something that doesn't flex, it felt like I was hitting steel on steel. But it slowly drove that uh, quill stop up, and I had to keep adding grease into it, but uh, drove it out and you know didn't damage anything. So, same principle applied here. Uh, we'll put this thing in a suitable uh, situation to support it, and I hope I can video where this uh, Jacobs Tabor Arbor will, you know, with one hit will drop out. Let's uh, give it a try. Oh, so hopefully that will do what I'm looking for, which is let me drop an O-ring into there. This end will go into the chuck first and it will seal against that back surface of the chuck, allowing the pressure from the mandrel to get transmitted into the cavity behind the, behind the uh, arbor. I think I have a pretty decent setup here with a right angle uh, plate that has a nice hole in it big enough to support the chuck, yet let the arbor drop through. And the blocks of wood are basically taking the impact directly down through the legs to the ground. Now I'm gonna use a fairly thick oil for the mandrel part, but to make sure that that lower cavity gets filled without any air bubbles, I'm gonna use a thin, uh, this is the spindle oil that I use on the uh, tool and cutter grinder. I'm basically going to fill this cavity up until I just see the oil starting to approach that uh, that drilled uh, passage there in the end. Okay, there we are. And for the uh, rest of it, I've got the ADW140, which I'm going to use to fill the mandrel. Now I need to put some pressure on this as I'm tightening the chuck around it. I'm going to attempt to squash that o-ring down some as I hold this mandrel in place, get a little bit of compression on it. Now basically, whoop, fill up the mandrel. 
and the viscosity of this oil is hopefully enough that uh, you know the time it takes to squish that oil out is uh, more time than it uh, has to create that pressure. My oil drained down, which means my O-ring was probably leaking. Better now, it's not showing any signs of draining down. You can also attempt to uh, get you a low angle shot of this in slow motion. Okay, going to try to get this inserted about, I don't know, quarter inch or half inch before I whack it. All right, let's see what happens. Resounding success. That ends in pretty good shape. Looks like it just slipped on the number three. A lot of dirt in there. Now that you can look through it, you can see how small that hole is in the back side. So I'm glad we were able to get that out with the hydraulic principle. There we go. Much better looking shank than uh, that one that was in there. I hope you enjoyed that little engineering trick to get a stuck uh, Jacob's Arbor out of a chuck. And I've tried it before, it works with uh, blind holes, works with through holes. You just gotta have a uh, good fit and generate enough hydraulic pressure to you know, move the item that you're trying to move. So um, next time I might be moving this guy out of the way once I get uh, some harder wood to for it to roll on or some bigger rollers. I've got to do something because it's just crushing into the two by fours. I have some Ipe, which is really hard wood. I might try that and uh, see if that works out for it. But uh, sold the uh, Miltronics Partner 4. Didn't get much for it, but hey, they're, they're going to put it to use. They're not going to scrap it. They're driving down from uh, uh, probably up in New York area to get it, so I'm glad to see that go uh, off to a good home. So next time from Engineer's Workshop, I think we'll get back with this guy. We'll do some more work on radial arm saw and just work on some little projects as they arise. So uh, until always, uh, until next time, as always, stay safe. <laughs>